Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to this week's episode, Business Insights with Matt Milia. And I'm super excited because I always bring on folks who are owning their space in the financial world, in real estate, in mortgage, in insurance. But I've got someone who's going to bring a an absolute must-watch really to help you become the best version of yourself. And the first thing that she's going to discuss and she's going to talk about is overall health and wellness and how it relates to business and the one key ingredient that you're missing from your life and your business. And once you have this ingredient, it is going to make a huge difference and impact in everything you do. But before I go into that first, I'm going to cue my intro. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now stay tuned for our podcast. All right, Cheryl, thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. I love to talk about this because it almost completely derailed my own business. So I'm very passionate to share this with your listeners. Oh, that's amazing. Well, so for everyone that that doesn't know you, would you mind telling everyone a, a little bit about yourself? Um, I was a retail executive. I ran a store with 300 employees and I had been a fine jewelry buyer for a department store. So when I left retail, I started my own jewelry design company to sell all the big box jewelers in America, all my competition. And I was manufacturing in China, and I had always had partners in the beginning when I went out into my jewelry world. And I finally left off the cliff and went out there as a solopreneur. So I was very driven to succeed. But as a result of that, I was doing everything to make my business successful, except take care of me. And I started getting little warnings that I was feeling lousy, but I wasn't paying attention to it. They were going through my brain so quick. I didn't even stop to realize how lousy I was feeling. And friends started pulling me aside and going, Cheryl, your stress is out of control. And everything I'm reading is that stress accumulates. So pay attention to me. But did I listen? No. Until a two by four literally came down. I woke up one morning and I could not get out of bed because everything in my body hurt. And flash forward, it took me two years to find a doctor who even knew what was wrong with me. I had full-blown autoimmune disease. But what I want to talk to your listeners about is that if you don't take care of you, I don't care what business foundation you have in place. If you don't have health, you can't make wealth and it will derail, derail you. The only thing that saved me was I had a staff who each had their own specific responsibilities so that when I backed out of the business for a while to research, because my doctor had no clue what was wrong with me, um, they kept it going. And I would go in once a week and just say, you're doing a great job. Try this, try this. And then I talked to the customers, but I lost some business, but I did not go bankrupt because the business moved forward. But I want to talk to everyone about what kind of self-care is important and why it will make a huge difference to their bottom line. That's amazing. And I know for so many folks, it's, we, we tend to put, we tend to put ourselves last in so many things. The builder who builds a home, but his house is falling apart. Uh, The, you know, the nutritionist who, uh, you know, is they're letting their own health fail because they're spending time building and growing their business. I mean, the financial advisor who their finances are not necessarily where they're supposed to be because they're spending time on everyone else. And sometimes we have to be, sometimes we we have to be, for lack of a better word, a little bit selfish with ourselves because if it, and it goes back to that whole saying, you know, put your oxygen mask on first, right. because if you don't, 
you're not going to be able to serve anybody at that highest level. So, I mean, what are your thoughts as far as, I mean, on, you know, some of the challenges that people have today, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that today's entrepreneur faces as far as health and health well, and happiness? What I goes? want everybody to consider is how will it impact everybody else in their business? Mm. If you're healthy, you have a brain that functions better because mm -hmm. good food has a direct line up the vagus nerve to your brain, it will impact your thinking processes, your creativity, your strategy, um, all of it. And it dramatically improves your relationships. So you'll have better relationships with your employees, with your customers. If you have a boss, it can improve your relationship with your corporate management. Whatever it is, it all starts with health, and to me, I started with two pillars. There are 12 in total. But the two pillars I started with were stress, because my cortisol was so low, I was almost to Addison's disease. I had depleted all my cortisol. So I was completely frazzled. And that was coming out with my blood sugar. All my hormones were out of whack. So it was definitely impacting my relationships. And then I was eating at night as fast as I was working all day. I would walk in the door and I was eating with the speed of light. I wasn't eating anything that had any nutrition or food quality. I was eating the American standard diet of all processed food that is made specifically to be only loaded with synthetic ingredients. that gives your body no nutrition. I call it gray dead food now because that's what I was feeding on. And if you don't take care of eating all the phytonutrients that are available in plant food, which rebuild your cell, cells, which are rebuilding all the time. Little things like your gut lining rebuilds itself every six days. If you're only eating junk, it has nothing to build with. And because of that vagus nerve that impacts all your hormones, if you don't eat well, it, there's, a, there's a phrase that's popular in health. You are what you eat. Well, guess what? your gut bacteria are also what you eat. And if you don't eat healthy food, you have unhappy, ugly, nasty, bad bacteria down there. And that's gonna impact everything in your life. It shortens your telomeres, it ages you, it slows down your brain, and it will slow down your ability to build your business and your bottom line. So you know that so many folks have, if they could deposit all their excuses and turn that into currency, there'd be more millionaires ever. But there's a lot of people that take those, they have these excuses as to why they can't do it. What are some things that you recommend as far as, you know, what are some staples, I guess, really, I think would be the best place well, to start? Let me start with stress because it's the easiest. It was yes. my biggest problem and it was my easiest problem to solve. I okay. got to a functional doctor. She's graduated from Yale Medical School. She's a full doctor, but she got sick, which is what most functional doctors did and couldn't help herself. So by the time I got to my allopathic conventional doctor said, what's to do? You're not diseased yet. Well, I was real close to going over the line. So the first thing we did was we built up my DHEA which is what feeds cortisol. That was as simple as buying a spray on Amazon and using it every day. And then I started doing yoga and breathing exercises. The breathing exercises you can learn to do yourself. They take four minutes and you do them twice a day. You look up Dr. Andrew Weil on YouTube and you do it with him. And it's called the four, seven, eight breathing exercise. It lowers your stress level and reset your parasympathetic nervous system. And I know it works because my functional doctor is all the way across town in Los Angeles. So I drive in LA traffic. My blood pressure was sky high when I was getting to her. I now do this breathing exercise and I have the best pulse and the lowest blood pressure of any patient she has. Wow. It's an easy exercise to do. If I can't sleep, I do it. Um, if I'm stressed and I'm about to see a customer and I'm not sure how it's gonna go, I do this exercise. This exercise is like gold. There are some, I actually did a desktop stress book that has several exercises in it. If you get bored with this one, one is as simple as standing next to your chair and bouncing for three minutes. You'll feel all the energy go through your body and up to your brain. And when you're done doing it, you are so much more productive because your brain has come alive again. 
it's important to control your stress and stress impacts every organ in your body and it impacts your brain. So start there. It's easy. I do it every morning at 10 and every afternoon at two. Everybody's got stress, but what you don't want is chronic stress, which is what interrupts your life and puts you out of balance. So that's the first thing. Then I started looking into food because I had no idea what the difference was between conventional, organic, and genetically modified. We'd had genetically modified on the ballot in California, and it lost because there was so much misinformation about genetically modified. Well, genetically modified means they grow poison right in the food. So trust me, you don't want that because literally you are poisoning yourself with every bite of anything you take that's genetically modified. And then we go to conventional versus organic. Conventional crops are sprayed heavily with really nasty chemicals. The biggie was glyphosate until two years ago when they lost a multi-billion dollar lawsuit because it came out in discovery that they had known for 25 years that it was causing all kinds of health problems because it was poisoning people. And um, Bayer was in the process of buying Monsanto when that happened. And they've now paid out $80 billion to people who have gotten cancer. But it's still being sprayed on our conventional crops. They just banned it from being used at home. That's good. The guy who brought the lawsuit was spraying schoolyards, for God's sake. But wow. now you can't spray it at home. That's a good thing. But it's still being sprayed on your food. So, And then there's atrazine. There's all kinds of nasty chemicals. One just got banned that was interrupting children's brains dramatically. You don't want that stuff on your food. So EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group, puts out a card, a list every year of the 12 dirtiest vegetables and fruits. And... You can find it on my website. You do not ever want to eat those conventionally because you do not want a heavy dose of poison with your food. And that will interrupt your life. I have decided life and health is balance. And if you want to be successful in business, you need to keep balance. Well, your body needs to keep balance too. So for God's sakes, cut out the, the toxins and the chemicals. I now buy almost everything organic because even things that aren't on that nasty list could have as many as 72 chemicals on them. And some of them are neurotoxins. Some of them interrupt your, uh, they're called endocrine disruptors. They screw up with all your hormones. Some of them are killing our bees and our butterflies. No bees, no butterflies, no food gang. So where you can afford it, and if you're an executive, for God's sakes, put your money there because you're worth it and your children are worth it. And while I just mentioned children quickly, 54% of our kids have chronic illness already. So That's listen sick. up because this is important. Now, what has big food done? They have addicted us on purpose to the standard American diet. It's loaded with chemicals that you can't pronounce and you don't know what they are. So guess what? Your body doesn't know what they are either. So stop it already. If you pick up a box at the grocery store and there are words on that label that you don't know what they are, including innocuous things like natural flavorings. Doesn't sound bad, right? What is it? It's MSG. And MSG is a neurotoxin. Pretty much we all know that MSG is not good for us, even if we've not been in Dells. But they now hide that under 39 different names on box labels because they don't want you to know they've put that in there. Big food, big pharma, big chemical, they don't care about your health, they care about their profits. So stop thinking that they're gonna take care of you, you're gonna take care of you. You have to take the ownership and then start to eat real food. And my whole phrase is eat real fruits and vegetables of all the colors of the rainbow because each one has different phytonutrients in it that get together and party in your body to create health and you need them all. The plant doesn't make them for us, they make them for them because if an animal comes up to eat them, they can't run away. But they make these chemicals that ends up, nature's amazing, have incredible benefits for the human body if we would only take advantage of them. So you wanna eat as close to the farm as you can, you wanna eat organic and you wanna eat all seven of the major color groups. Because when that happens, 
you actually will start to feel the difference in your body. It only takes to detox off of them. Uh, I run a detox off of standard American diet and all the, what I call crap, carbonated, refined, artificial, and processed food. It takes a month to do that. But once you're off that food, you even get back two hormones I never heard of called ghrelin and leptin that regulate your appetite. So if you ever ate a big meal and then you're in the kitchen, like after Thanksgiving, going after that pumpkin pie, that's because those hormones aren't registering that you are filled to the gills and you should not be eating anymore. So all of that comes back. All your happy hormones come back. Your serotonin is actually made in your gut. That's your biggest happy hormone. But dopamine comes back. GABA, which helps anxiety, comes back. All of these things come back because you're not feeding your body toxins and sugar, and they're both devastating chemicals, and you don't need them. So you got to detox off of it to be successful. And then I hate to tell everybody, you need to cook. Because by cooking, it's the only way you control what goes into your body, and it's worth it. And you don't have to be Julia Child. You just have to buy quality ingredients. And I get up in the morning, I take out my meat, and I take a look at what vegetables I have. And then I go in the kitchen and I have dinner on the table in 30 minutes. I can't drive to a fast food drive through in 30 minutes and bring home food. So, right. if, and it's not hard to cook. You can do it as simple as chopping up your vegetables and roasting them in your oven with a little bit of uh, butter. I can't have butter. I'm dairy sensitive. I use ghee, which has all the solids out of it, but it's delicious. And you use seasonings and then make some kind of quality protein. Now, what is quality protein? Quality protein is eating an animal that has eaten his own specific diet. So cows have two stomachs. They eat grass. Don't go eating cows that are eating genetically modified corn. They're not eating what they're supposed to eat. They're not healthy. They're being given hormones and antibiotics and all kinds of stuff so that they can last long enough to land on your plate. If you buy grass-fed, grass-finished beef, you're getting healthy animals that ate what they're supposed to eat that have been treated better, and it's much better for your body. Pastured chicken. All lambs eat grass, so they're easy. If you eat lamb, you can buy any lamb. Bison. Most bison eat grass, but ask the butcher or ask at your grocery store. And if you're vegan, you don't want to be eating a lot of soy unless it's organic because 93% of it has BT toxin in it, which is genetically modified. So quality protein, whatever you're putting, you're worth it. If you want to build your life and you want to grow old without pain and pills, it's worth it to put quality ingredients into your house so that you can cook with them and put them into your body. It takes, a, my, my website says, give me 90 days and you'll feel the difference. Frankly, you'll feel the difference in 30 days. Um, you can't, and I recommend everybody looks in the mirror and has a conversation when they get up in the morning. How are you feeling today, Cheryl? Because my body is way smarter than I ever gave it credit for. And if I get quiet and I listen to it, it'll tell me if I did something the day before that did not go well with me. And I adjust immediately because it feels good to feel good, which is the name of my book. And I have never given it up. I love and that. Guess what standard American diet actually is? It's not just what you buy in boxes. It's all your frozen food that's loaded with chemicals. And believe it or not, most restaurants now buy food in little plastic baggies and zap them and arrange them on your plate. So you're getting chemicals everywhere unless you're taking control and cooking yourself. Now, we have a second home in Sedona. That's where I am right now. There are 15 restaurants here that I can walk in off the street and order because they're farm to table and they only use quality meat here. But this is an unusual community. And if I'm in Los Angeles, I couldn't find that many restaurants if I went from one end to the other. So I cook most of the food that we eat and it's worth it. You can do it in a short amount of time. You don't have to be a gourmet cook. It will make a huge difference in how you show up in your life, in your relationships, and in your job. That's, I mean, there's so much there to unpack, but I, I want to... I'm going to look at something from a convenience factor because, you know, there's always those people. Uh, 
Icon meals. I don't want to even isolate just one, but that's just one I thought of off the top of my head. Um, there's also, have you ever looked into those meal? Actually, where I they... did last night because I saw it was on your list of what you wanted me to talk about, and I don't use them. There okay. is an article that rates them by a company I like that I get health information from called Healthline. So okay. you can look at them. I would not use any of the ones that they talk about because I can't, con number one, I have something called 18 food sensitivities. That was my first giant leap away from pain. I stopped mm -hmm. eating those things. And there's a test you can take to find out what those are. So I eat unusual and I cook unusual because I trade out ingredients all the time so that I don't mm. trigger inflammation in my body. But beyond that, you can't control how much of it is or isn't organic. Right. And my husband teases me that I am a smoke alarm that goes off in a 50 mile radius for any um, poison that's in the environment or on the food. <laughs> so I'm very sensitive to it, but you're a lot more sensitive to it than you realize. And there's something that the functional community believes in called toxic load. Your liver does a really good job cleaning out all the toxins until it can't. When it becomes overloaded, the first thing it does, it starts to stuff them into your fat and your bones. Mm. And then it, it, it overloads. It can't go anywhere else. And that's when inflammation begins to build. And when inflammation begins to build, that's the beginning of all your chronic diseases, autoimmune, cancer, heart disease, liver disease, diabetes, all of that starts with toxic load. And so you need to pay attention to what's in your environment and what you're putting in your body. And mm. yes, people are hooked both to the convenience and processed food is dirt cheap. It's dirt cheap for a couple of reasons. There's nothing in it that feeds you anything. That's the first one. Right. They have, we spend less as a population here in the United States on our food than any other country because we don't wow. care about the quality of our food. And if big food is making something for England, they're making it with much better ingredients than they're making it for us here because they know we don't care. So you need to be dealing with quality ingredients. Your body deserves that. Um, and these food companies that supply you food, what are they sending you? A lot of them send you vegetables that are cut up. Do you know how long it takes me to cut up vegetables? Less than five minutes. Right. Fast. So am I going to pay a premium to get non-organic produce so that it comes to me cut up so that no. I can cook it quickly? No. There are some, if you are working so much, you don't have time to shop. What do you do? I started with farm fresh deliveries which is right from the farm to my doorstep. All I had to do is get up on a Tuesday morning and bring the box in and put it in the refrigerator. But there are also now two food services that deliver that use the produce that used to be wasted. They're little things that have little hiccups. They're not pretty. They're imperfect. Mm. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with them. They're delicious. So one is called Imperfect Produce. They're in most states, but not all. And the other one is misfits. And if they ship to a state, they ship to every place in the state. So between those three, and look, you probably have others in your state. You're in Florida, for God's sake. A lot of stuff is grown there. If you oh, yeah. look into it, they'll deliver it. You get up in the morning, you bring in the box. It takes you no time at all. So what do you do about your quality protein? When I started, I was buying from a company called Wellness Meats. And Wellness Meats has big sales. So you wait for the sale so that you can buy enough that they ship it to you frozen for free. And then you stock your freezer. So then when you get up in the morning, you take out your hamburger. You take, you look at what vegetables you have. You're thinking about what you're going to do with them. It could be as easy as chopping it up and sauteing it together. It does not take a lifetime to do that. You do not have to be Julia Childs. Even Julia Childs has quotes that says, it just means you have to cook with quality ingredients. So you're worth it to spend the four seconds to think about it, to make real food and feed your body real nutrition. What if, what if you like sugar? Is there a, um, a I mean, sugar is. You're addicted. I'm, it's horrible. Oh, yeah. What oh, it yeah. does is it lights up the same area of the brain as cocaine and heroin. 
Oh, yeah. Gotcha. And it goes off like it actually goes off like a pinball machine. It is even worse than cocaine and heroin. They fed rats sugar and then they fed them cocaine and then they gave them a choice of both after a while. They chose the sugar because the sugar was the bigger addiction. But here's the thing. Sugar is mucking around with everything in your body. It is mm. a poison and it's turning off all your feel good hormones. It's whacking out your blood pressure. So your moods are all over the place. It's right. screwing around with your appetite hormones. So you need to detox off of it. And it takes maybe three weeks. And it's a pretty ugly three weeks. I will grant you that. I, do, I run a group and we support each other through it. When I did it, I was in bed for three days with what I thought was a really ugly flu. But that was because I was eating so much sugar that was making wow. me sick. Once you come out the other end, you have food freedom. Cookies are no longer calling my name from the kitchen. I right. could open up a box of cookies and only eat one and not care less. I can go out with girlfriends and they can all order dessert and it doesn't even taste good to me anymore. And wow. in California, we have something called Seas Candy, which was my all time favorite. So after I'd been off of sugar for about a year and a half, I parked by my bank and there was Seas Candy there. And I thought, you know, I, I'm to the point where I could eat just one piece and it would be fine. So I went in, I bought one piece. I took it out to the car because I really wanted to enjoy it. I bit into it and I went, oh my God, it tasted God awful. I got out of the car and I threw it away because your taste buds change yeah. and you start to taste real food. I had a client who just took my last class and she called me and said, I just came home from the farmer's market. All I bought were cucumbers and tomatoes. I am never buying another cucumber and tomato from the grocery store again. I can't believe how delicious these organic vegetables are. Oh wow. my God. Because she, all her taste buds came back. We don't even realize what this stuff is doing to us. But biggest thing for a business owner is it's mucking around with your brain. It's interfering mm. with your children's learning. It's interfering with your ability to reason out and come up with new solutions for your business. It's mucking around with everything. And depression is a direct cause of what you put in your gut. So it's mucking around with your moods and all your feel-good hormones, all your reasoning, all your brain power, your sleep. It mucks around with your sleep, um, your hormones. Trust me, if you come out the other end and you pay attention to let your body vote, you're not going to want to go back. So it's worth it. But we are so tied into buying all this crap, literally. Yeah. We don't even give it a try. And the first thing people say to me is there's nothing to eat on this side. You can eat almost any vegetable and fruit you want. There's plenty to right. eat on this side. You just have to pull away and let your body adjust to the benefits and the phytonutrients in real food. And they, when I started, they said there were um, 5,000, then it was 25,000, then it was 50,000. Now they know there's 100,000 different phytonutrients that we need in plant food. I think that's pretty astonishing. Oh, yeah. And Com they, they can they can cure disease. They can If you eat from the pharmacy with an F, you'd be surprised what they can do. And believe it or not, pills only mitigate symptoms. They don't cure anything. Right. But if you start eating real food, you can start to re rebuild your body from the inside out. What are your thoughts on complex carbs? And like, so bread, for example, like I've heard sourdough bread is actually better for you because there's more bacteria or I don't the know bacteria how. Bacteria eats up what sugar is in the flour and it is okay. better for you. I okay. eat some bread. I only eat organic bread. That's an important uh, difference because okay. wheat that used to be tall and flowing when I was a child, and I'm considerably older than all of you. Now it's the short little stumpy thing that, that they have manufactured. And in order to get it to a big yield, they literally pour glyphosate on it. Glyphosate is the thing that they just lost the big lawsuit on that creates cancer. And they don't wash any of that off, but they pour glyphosate on it because then the plant goes into shock and it creates a lot more little wheat things on it. So they get a much bigger yield. So they right. don't care that that glyphosate is going to give you cancer. They care that they're going to get a big yield from it. So 
Whole Foods now makes several loaves of organic bread. I have a bakery in Pasadena, California that uses heirloom grains that are organic. I have a bakery here in Sedona that only bakes organic bread. You're going to have to look for it, but it tastes better and it's so much better for you. Now, it is still Wait. complex carbohydrates. So yeah. my body, I my, and I am borderline diabetic. So my body is going to turn it into sugar. So it's not an everyday treat. But I am not deprived in any way because I get to eat all kinds of yummy stuff. And when you get your taste back, buds back, you don't care so much. But complex right. carbohydrate is not just things that are white, the flour and the sugar and the cornstarch and all that oh, yeah. stuff. It's also vegetables like um, squashes. You can eat, uh, here's a little tip on potatoes. You cook your potato, only organic. He has all kinds of nasty chemicals on him. You put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours and it goes from a high glycemic vegetable to a moderate to low glycemic vegetable. So it doesn't muck around with your blood sugar anymore. Then you can heat it up, you can fry it, you can bake it, you can do whatever you want with it because now it's not gonna interfere with your sugar in your body the same way. Isn't that I amazing? I've heard that before, and I didn't know that that was – I when I say I've heard that before, I've heard a variation of that. I've never actually heard the entire – because someone said pasta, like, 24 hours is better than pasta right when you cook it. I don't know if how true that is. But it may be true. Is, that one I yeah. have not read, but okay. pasta, again, because it's wheat. Enriched only by, flowers. And you don't stuff. want the enriched. Yeah. Believe it or not, synthetic vitamins – your body has no idea what to do with them. And they actually go into the body like poison. So the oh, government wow. enforces them to enrich yeah. the chemicals in bread and in pasta. And they're bad for you, just like fluoride is bad for you. You don't want it. So buy Italian organic pasta. It doesn't have all that crap in it. Mm -hmm. And then um, don't eat it every day. Right, right. And sometimes eat something like spaghetti squash which has all kinds of good vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients in it. You cook it, you de -seed it, you cook it, and it comes out in long strands like spaghetti. And right. it's a favorite meal in my house. Wow. For, for everyone that's watching, by the way, I mean, I'm getting educated myself over here. Uh, it's funny because I'm just sitting here like, we're doing a podcast and I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm like taking notes. I mean, I have a whole page <laughs> of notes already. Good. Uh, but for everyone that's watching, CherylMHealthMuse.com, I mean, yeah, this, what you're putting out there is amazing. So I, I, I have a couple more things I want to ask you since I've got you. Pure Encapsulations, I don't know if you've ever heard of that brand. It's supposed to be a vitamin. What do you think of vitamins? Are vitamins good, bad? And I, mean, I obviously do need... take some supplements. Okay. And I have my doctor test me for some things every time I go in, my functional doctor. Mm. I am always low with vitamin, uh, with D3 and with magnesium. Yeah. I have a really hard time keeping my magnesium levels up. Mm. Those two work together. So if you are missing one or the other, they do 325 different enzyme reactions in your body. So you oh. need to make sure that you have adequate supplies of those in your body. Mm. But do I believe in only drinking vitamin drinks in order to get all that stuff? Uh-uh. Start with real food. I want you to get the majority of your vitamins from real food. And then I do take a B complex because you can't just take one. You need the whole family for them to work right. I do take vitamin C because even though I do eat foods that have vitamin C in it, I want to boost it because it too has all kinds of roles in the body that are important. So, but, but just like food, quality matters. Don't just go buying any vitamin or supplement at the grocery store or your drugstore. Buy a quality brand because there are huge differences. And even differences in the filler in it or the coating of it. And you want to make sure it doesn't have soy in it, soy lectin, any of that stuff. Oh, alpha, it's all genetically modified. So you want to buy quality so that you know you're only putting the best stuff in your body. And then you want to pay attention to how does it make your body feel? Because your body will vote. You, are you a big fan of uh, cyanocobalamin? You know, that I don't is, even right? know what that is. <laughs> 
cyanide. So your vitamin B, there's something in there called cyanocobalamin. Uh, it was actually something I was taking forever. It's a legal form of cyanide that is in vitamin B12. Uh, so I always make sure I take methylated vitamins. The um, makes a world of difference. I, I notice a huge increase in my energy and my clarity. Uh, and, and I mean, look, I'm going to be as transparent as I can be. I eat like crap. I'm not a good eater. I need well, to eat hopefully better. Hopefully I'm going to make you rethink that. I oh, want to you inspire are. you, you to have. eat better. You already have. That's why I have this page full of notes. I was sitting there thinking, I do, I do eat some organic, but I'm very... I'm so inconsistent and that is my, and sometimes I choose that convenience over and it's, it's not good. I, I know it's not good. So that's something I need to change. And 100%. You're worth it to upgrade and you're and, young. And some of the things I'm telling you actually have been backed up by a national geographic study called mm -hmm. the blue zones. Have you ever heard of that? No. This guy went to the five areas in the world where people live the longest, and he studied them. And my 12 pillars of health end up being pretty much the same 12 steps to health that he does. Number one is community. You can't do it alone. And if you have people in your life when you start this that are not eating like you are, you'll influence them. They'll move towards you. You don't push them. But then you start adding new friends in that are healthier, that want to support you because community is important. Oh, and yeah. then next to me is food. You got to get the food into place and then the breathing exercises. And then you have to move. It doesn't mean yeah. you have to move. You don't have to run a marathon, but you got to right. get outside. And if you're not sleeping, if you get outside just for five minutes in the morning, it resets your whole circadian rhythm and you'll sleep much better at night because wow. you get that burst of vitamin D and it resets your clock and you'll sleep much better. So you want to get outside. You want to be in nature. Um, you want to have an empty mind so that you can be creative. You want to be mindful. Um you want to practice gratitude. There was a huge study that just came out of the University of Berkeley, at California at Berkeley, my old alma mater, that gratitude has all kinds of health benefits. But I practice wow. gratitude because it gets me to start off my day on a positive note. I sit and write down three things I am particularly grateful for from yesterday. And then what you put out, the energy of your body is what you draw in. So if I start off being positive, my whole day is way more positive than if I hadn't done that. But it, it, think about it, how it impacts all your relationships. If you're grateful for your family, they're happy that you're part of it. If you're grateful for your employees, they work harder for you. If you're grateful to your customers, I consider it an action verb, they want to do more business with you. So gratitude is crucial. And part of gratitude is kindness. You want to go out there and you want to practice random acts of kindness. And we seem to have moved away from that as a population. So let's all bring it back. Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, as far as stores go, and I know, I mean, we're in different areas of the country. I know Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get myself shadow banned here. Uh, I'm assuming Walmart's probably somewhere you kind of want to stay away from the big Believe chain. Or not, Walmart. Uh, okay, Walmart does carry some organic products. Um, so kudos to them for doing that because they get into areas of the United States that nobody else does. Okay. But Good. in Florida, I would prefer you go to the weekly farmers market. Okay. Because the closer you buy to when it's harvested, the mm -hmm. better off you are. Because things like spinach begin to lose some of their benefits in as short as three days. Wow. And does that mean that you never buy spinach at Publix? No. It means that the closer to the farm you are, the bigger the benefit for your body. So it's worth making the time for it. And... Mm -hmm. It's also great because you get to talk to the farmer. You get to know how your food was grown. And it's a fun thing to do. We do it on Saturday or Sunday morning. So we go to different farmer's markets because we find different cool things. As foodies, we oh, are yeah. still foodies. We just are foodies who eat healthy. So hey. um, different farmer's markets. I have somebody who makes me homemade V8 juice at one of the farmer's markets. Wow. Because V8 juice has all kinds of crud in the can. 
and hers is delicious. So I'll, I'll order and I'll go pick up all my mason jars full of juice. So get to know your farmer. So, but other than that, um, can you buy at Walmart? Sure. You can also buy Trader Joe. I don't know if you have those there. Trader Joe is also yeah. a little further away from the farm. And Costco is a little further away from the farm than I would prefer. But if that's okay. where you can find the stuff, for God's sake, that's what you want to do. And if you can't find organic at all, eat vegetables and fruit. This right. doesn't, it, it's, it's kind of a hierarchy of what's going to give your body the biggest benefit. What you don't want to be doing is eating chemicals and gray, nasty food that does absolutely nothing for your body. I always had a weight problem. And one of the first things I read that confused me was if I was having a weight problem and I was eating processed food, I was starving my body. Mm. I, how can I be starving my body? I'm heavy. I was starving my body because my body was taking any little morsel of nutrition and holding on to it because it was in starvation mode. Mm. So it wasn't going to let go of anything until I started eating real food on a regular basis. And since I did that without dieting, I have lost 65 pounds. That's amazing. It just that... fell off. Wow. I gave so, my body what it wanted. So when, so if you could give me a little bit of timeline just for context, and I've kept your, I've kept your website up. I want everyone to see this because I mean, this I'm learning right now. And it's funny because I always, I was always something that prided myself on saying, oh, I know about these different things. And, you know, we, I think we sometimes take our knowledge for granted or we know it, but we don't execute on it. But going back to timeline, when you had the, the autoimmune disease, would you mind sharing with everybody? I mean, how old were you then? And... I was 63. Okay. I had, okay. I didn't have a doctor that I could go to in the beginning that understood, but I fell into yeah. the functional community and I listened to 19 symposiums with multiple doctors, mm. made notes. And where I started was stress, food, and eliminating environmental toxins in my home. Mm. And so my first book tells you how I researched what I found and what I traded out for to lower my toxic load. It took me five years to come back to no pain. There were big leaps in there. One of the big leaps was finding out what my sensitivities were. And then uh, my functional doctor took me the rest of the way home away from pain when I finally went on Medicare and I could afford to go to her. Sure. But five years, but you know something? It took me 63 years to get there. So sure. five years really isn't all that bad to get back home. I still have autoimmune disease. I still do get inflammation if I'm not careful. But the journey has been absolutely worth it. And it nothing about my life today is the same as, as it was when I was 63. The guy I was living with for 10 years didn't want to go on a get well journey with me. So he went out the door. I went on the old fogey dating site and found a guy that did want to go on a get well journey with me. And I married him seven years ago. That's and awesome. He cooks with me. He went from being full diabetic to not being diabetic at all because That's of the amazing. way we eat and so if you they'll tell you you cannot cure diabetes if you're on medication you're right it's mm -hmm. not going to get cured but if you eat real food and you cut out all the crap and the sugar you can heal a whole lot of stuff that you had no idea about you have to support your body can so, you flash a copy of the book too so everybody can yeah, see it i, you I have, have it. two the first okay. one is it feels good to feel good it's available on amazon it's won 17 awards People tell me it's like sitting in my living room and having a conversation with me. And people tell me they leave it on their bedside table so that they can look things up like a reference book. But it is written as a layman to other laymen. So it's not a medical jargon. And it has a huge reference library in the back of it of all the people I follow. That if you get into wanting to learn more about health, I lead you to all the people that you can go find it from. And it's not so easy to find them anymore if you don't know what you're looking for, because both Google and Amazon have invested in pharmaceutical companies. So if you oh, have yeah. the list, you can go directly to their pages and you can learn. The second book I wrote, because my functional doctor asked me to write it, this has won seven awards, Feeling Good, Living Low Toxin and Community in Everyday Life. This is a book of how do I sustain this? when I'm eating different and living a different lifestyle than everybody else mm. in my life. 
how do I vet a restaurant? What do I do if I'm with a whole group and I don't get to pick the restaurant? What do I do when I'm invited to someone's house for dinner? Somebody said to me, you're not going to make me cook just for you, are you? No, I'm not. I call the host. I say, we're thrilled we're coming to your house for dinner. We really want to get to know you, but don't feel bad. I eat different. So we're going to bring our own food and I'll bring plenty so that your guests can try it if they want to. Um, But we're coming because we want to get to know you and your friends. So don't worry about how you're going to feed me because I'm going to take care of that. I have learned to take food both for the group and separately for John and I because I wasn't getting any. People would eat it and go, oh, my God, this is healthy. As I said, just because I eat healthy does not mean we're deprived. I have learned to make really yummy, unusual things, and people get excited when they eat it. So I there's a whole chapter on what do you do for bugs in the house because I don't want to be spraying sides pesticides, right. herbicides, right. sides means kill. And so I met um, Richard the bug man, who was in charge of bug control for the state of New Mexico for his whole career. And he shared all his tips. And they're funny. One of them is how to get rid of roaches. I only had roaches once when I lived in Beverly Hills. You put a, you put a lid down with beer in it and they go in and they drown themselves. <laughs> Can you stand it? Um, I use deciduous dirt to get rid of ants, which I hate when they invade my house. Oh, yeah. And there's a spray of vinegar, water, and dish detergent that will take care of almost any bug if you're only after one. But you don't want all those poisons in your house for you, for your kids, for your pets. There's a whole chapter in there on how to raise healthy children. For a whole year before you even conceive, you should be eating healthy. Because children are now being born with 290 toxins in their umbilical cord. Wow. So they're starting off with toxic load right from the beginning. You want to know why allergies are so prevalent in our children? It's because of how the parents ate. And it's both the father and the mother. Oh, that gosh. one surprised oh. me. Yeah. And so there's a whole chapter on how to let your children grow some food in the windowsill of your kitchen and how you, you want, a lot of parents will stop me and say, how do I get my child to eat healthier? I actually won an award for my box set from moms, um, from a mom's group. And the way you get children to eat healthy is they mimic you. If you sit and eat with them and you eat healthy and you talk to them about why they're eating the food they eat, They will mimic you when they're with their little friend. Take them grocery shopping. Let them choose what vegetables they want to eat. Take them with you to the farmer's market. Let them talk to the farmer. We've gotten too far away from the farm for kids to understand where food even comes from. The first thing that hit me was there was an article in the Washington Post that most 7 million people in America think that chocolate milk comes from chocolate cows. Oh, my God, that's too funny. Now, I, at first I thought, oh, my God, 7 million people think that. And they think that avocados are laid by animals. There's all kinds of crazy things. It's because oh. we are too far away from the farm. So to go to farmer's markets, or actually there's a farm here, even in the Sedona area, where you can take your kids and they can harvest their own crops. You help the farm because he doesn't have to pay for labor. You get a much better price. And it's a fun outing with the whole family. So, and then I have a whole section in the book on how to have healthy pets. Because while I was busy researching for me, all three of my cats died early. My cats always lived to their 20s. These guys died at 12, 14, and 16. Why was that? They were eating genetically modified pet food. Yeah. And all the environmental toxins in my house. So I have two new kitties that are two years old. They are living a much cleaner life because I did all the research. That's wonderful. So how to to go to farmer's markets, the importance of gratitude, the importance of stress release. Why you need to get into nature? Do you know that trees emit chemicals that can even help you cure cancer? They don't emit them for you. They actually take care of their children that are all around them, that they have spawned. They communicate to them when there's danger. They let these chemicals out that are called NK chemicals that heal the trees. Well, if you go sit in the trees, they help heal you too. Wow. 
And not There's a that. whole world of study going on about the magic of trees and some trees even their boughs go down at night and then they go up in the morning like a circadian rhythm. Wow. They're really fascinating. There is so much that we can unpack. I mean, I, I guess the very last thing that I'll ask you as far as, um, as far as any takeaways, I mean, number one, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, you gave so much Obviously, value. I love to do this. I'm very oh, passionate. Yeah. I want people to know this because I knew none of it 10 years ago. And at 73, I feel better than I did in my 50s. That's amazing. What, so, what advice would you give as far as um, for somebody that's just looking to make the change? Obviously, of course, I know, you know, we have your your website, which I'm going to put back up here. We have uh, the website that people can go to, the books. If if someone, I guess I'll ask this for me since this is probably my, and, and my wife too. I mean, she, she struggles with it too. Both like ice cream. It's probably one of the worst things, but we do like ice cream. Uh, what is, is, I mean, I know there's different, there's certain types of ice cream. There's different things out there. Do you recommend, are there substitutes for these sugary foods that are healthy that you would recommend? And they're coming out all the time. So yes, we do eat a little bit of ice cream. It ends up, I am severely dairy sensitive, which ends up being a good thing because there's unbelievable amounts of crack in dairy. So if you are going to eat dairy, the two tips are eat full fat. Because you don't want the dairy company to get the best part and the most expensive part of the milk. And right. if they, if it's low fat or non fat, they're spraying stuff in uh, it that's sticking in your arteries and causing cholesterol. So full fat, okay. organic is important because you don't want all the, the hormones and the antibiotics and the crap that they put into the poor cow to make all that milk. Um, so uh, we buy almond milk or cashew milk ice creams. We eat much smaller amounts of them, but because I have detoxed off of sugar, small amounts of them satisfy me, so it's not a problem. There's a new ice cream maker out there that will allow you to even make your own ice cream. I have a client who just bought it, and she's like having a blast because she's making it out of oatmeal milk. Oh, wow. Um, So from where I was when I started 10 years ago to what's available today, it's night and day. So one of my things is if our government is not protecting us. So what do we have to do We have to take care of ourselves? How do we take care of ourselves? We become armies of one and we refuse to buy that crap. By having enough of us joined together who aren't buying it, it only takes a 5% shift for big food, big pharma, all those guys to pay attention because they don't want to lose the business. So slowly, enough people are getting on the bandwagon and getting educated, and we are slowly changing the industry. And so more and more foods are available. But you got to be careful. There's a lot of healthy junk food out there, too. So the same rules apply. If you don't know what it is or you can't pronounce it, I don't care if it says it's organic. You don't eat it. Right. That's too funny. Well, Cheryl, thank you so very much for being on. I learned a lot on here, which is awesome. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to be going to the grocery store here soon and buying some more organic stuff. So, I mean, buying things, that's all I'll be eating. Uh, I do have grass fed beef in the freezer. So I just. And it's important that it's grass fed, grass finished, because all cows eat grass at the beginning. Right. But it's how they're finished that makes the difference. Are they eating GMO corn? Or are they eating grass? You want them eating grass. And does it Um, say on there grass finished? Is that something Yeah, you actually have to ask. It'll say organic. Or or you ask the butcher, is this grass-fed grass finished? Because if it's not, you don't want it. And then you go back to wellness meat and you order it. And you order enough so that you have plenty of it so that you don't pay for the freight and the frozen and all that stuff. Well, My podcast def- was very robust. I just stopped doing it because it was a consuming a lot of time and I have a new project I want to work on. But it is verbally, just the sound part of it, it's on Lip Sing and Apple and all the big podcast forums. And I'm in the process of putting the videos where you could see me onto YouTube. So some of them are there, some of them are not. They are a combination of me talking about a subject in depth. Everything I learned is the keys to my health. And me interviewing other people like me who got sick 
owned it, changed, and came back to health. So you, if you have cancer, you can find somebody else on my podcast who had cancer and listen to the commitment they made to come out the other end and be living in remission, hopefully for the rest of their lives or autoimmune disease or bipolar. I covered all kinds of subjects, even human trafficking. I had a guest who took her five years when she broke away from the people who held her to get off the drugs. So they're very interesting. They're amazing people. And I am really excited that I had a forum where I could highlight them. That's amazing. Well, Again, thank you so much for for coming on and uh, dropping so much knowledge. And uh, for everyone that's- Thanks for having me. I love talking about this. So I'm thrilled to talk to your group. Your business will improve if you pay attention to my health tips. I'm buying. I'm going to buy your books. That's the that's the next thing I'm doing as soon as we get off of here. So and you'll read see it my order. blogs because my blogs, as I find puzzle pieces, I write blogs about it so that people people are following me so that they can get new information. My next project is I'm going to do a series of three to five minute videos because mm. my podcasts are over an hour. It's going right. to want to listen to that. I don't have the patience for that anymore. And we, my husband's a statistician, so we've done a questionnaire so that everyone can determine their toxic load and where it is, and then go into a membership area and listen to a bunch of little tiny videos that give them their puzzle pieces. I love it. That's awesome. So it helps them, uh, it helps them get the most out of the time and learn the most and get the most value. And yeah, and I I want to touch, I want to change the way America eats. Yes, you will. You got, you got a long road ahead of you, but a good road. It's a, it's it's a great, I mean, it's definitely a massive need. So well, thank you so much, Cheryl. Thanks for coming on and Thanks for, for all... having me. Absolutely. It was, great for... fun. it was. And for all of our viewers, I'll see you guys same time, same channel next week. Thanks again. See ya. Thank you.